They walk among us, human beings who enjoy the pain and suffering of others. They love what most people fear and indeed what they themselves fear. Their brains generate pleasure in response to terror. They could be your neighbors, colleagues, or maybe even your own family. Now you might think I'm talking about murderous psychopaths, but no, I'm talking about people who enjoy horror movies. Now, all scary movie lovers, myself included, have different reasons for enjoying the types of horror that we do, but the fact is that we not only submit ourselves to fearful experiences, we pay good money for it too. But why? Fear is an emotion that helps us escape from danger or fight off predators. So why does the human brain have a capacity for enjoying fear? As we explore that question in this video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. It really helps. Thank you. So horror movies are all about inducing fear, which is typically an undesirable emotion. We usually can't stand the feeling of impending doom, threat, or failure, and escaping or destroying things that cause us fear is partially hardwired in our brains. A neural circuit that runs through the amygdala, hypothalamus, and brainstem causes us to freeze, fight, or flee when a source of danger presents itself. Now, as hardwired as that circuitry may be, just because you're scared doesn't mean you will automatically fight or run away. Say you're walking down the street alone at night and you suddenly hear footsteps behind you. You feel a powerful urge to sprint away or to grip a sharp object and defend yourself. But as the footsteps fade behind you, the urge dissipates. You were scared, but you chose not to act on that fear. Your prefrontal cortex kept you from losing your cool by tamping down the activity of the fear circuit. Still, it seems stupid from an evolutionary perspective to not only not run away from a source of danger, but to actually seek it out, as we do with horror movies. It makes sense then that not everyone likes horror. In fact, in a survey of US adults asking which genres they liked, horror movies ranked dead last at just 50%. In contrast, about 85 to 90% said they liked comedy, action, or drama. And also unlike most other genres, Horror is not enjoyed equally by the sexes. Men tend to like it more than women. But why? Men are typically less scared by horror movies, less sensitive to disgust, and tend to enjoy violent movies more in general. Women also exhibit more empathic concern, a trait correlated with less enjoyment of horror movies. I mean, in general, feeling more emotional empathy toward the protagonist will probably make the movie scarier because it'll feel more personal. And since we're quicker to feel empathy toward people who seem familiar, horror movies that emphasize character development may be scarier because viewers will be more immersed in the character's mental lives. Still, we can find a movie scary without actually enjoying it. So why do some of us truly enjoy horror movies? There are three prominent hypotheses. One suggests that we like the resolution of suspense. We experience negative feelings as the suspense builds and engages our brain's fear circuit. But when it's resolved, we savor the relief from those negative feelings. We turn off the fear circuit and turn on the brain's pleasure networks. So when the protagonist escapes the murderer or instead becomes a victim, as long as the suspense is resolved, we'll enjoy the scene just as much. Now the second hypothesis says that we enjoy the destruction and violence in a context where no one is actually being harmed. Personally, I find this one hard to relate to and some research suggests that people rate movies almost as highly if violent scenes are removed. So I'm not very convinced by that hypothesis. Now a third possibility is that we simply enjoy the physiological arousal. Just as many people love roller coasters and skydiving because of the adrenaline rush, Perhaps people love to feel their heart racing, blood pumping, and muscles stiffening when they watch a murderous clown silently sneak up on a child alone in the woods. Now, while none of these hypotheses have been definitively proven, I'd bet it's a combination of the resolution of suspense and the physiological arousal. If so, this would help to explain that universal horror movie motif, the jump scare. The startle response that same full body reflex you experience when say your friend is hiding around the next corner and then jumps out as you pass by is triggered by the brainstem quickly signaling muscles throughout the body to be ready for action. So when the protagonist stares into the bathroom mirror, looks down to wash her face, 
then looks up to see a dark figure gazing at her from the shadows, only to turn around and see nobody there after all. We, the viewers, experience the physiological arousal of the buildup and the jump scare, coupled with the resolution that it was all in her mind after all. Or was it? Filmmakers can amp up the anxiety and enhance your startle reflex if they make the scene dark and the protagonist vulnerable. Then add in some discordant, creepy music, followed by a sudden loud sound at the moment of the jump scare. And you've got an intense experience. A fourth possibility, which I haven't seen in the scientific literature, is that enjoying horror movies may be a sign of bravery. While horror lovers may enjoy the resolution of suspense and physiological excitement, perhaps those qualities are too general to account for why they like horror in particular. Maybe there's a social factor at play. Maybe some of us have an unconscious desire to show courage in the face of fear. Maybe. One thing we humans fear is uncertainty. And uncertainty is a fixture of all scary stories. Indeed, the right amount of unpredictability is an important feature of all good stories. When a movie is boring or cliche, we say it's predictable. If it's disorganized without a clear plot line, we might say it's scattered or completely unpredictable. But when a movie strikes the right balance of unpredictable plot twists embedded in a clearly defined narrative, we might say it's riveting or jaw-dropping. Our brains are prediction machines, constantly sketching maps of our environments, comparing those maps to sensory data, then modifying them accordingly. And we are always predicting the future, at least the immediate future. If you doubt that, then consider the following historical quote. There is nothing to fear but your brain might have completed that sentence with fear itself. And it would sound really weird if I replaced fear itself with Hannibal Lecter. There is nothing to fear but Hannibal Lecter. That weirdness, that uneasiness, is the feeling of having your prediction proven wrong. And there are happy surprises as well, which come about when things are better than predicted. So putting this together, in a scene where our protagonist narrowly escapes death, we might feel relief because our prediction was too pessimistic. We thought he was going to die. But in a different scene where he seems perfectly safe, but is actually unexpectedly captured or killed, we might experience a wave of fear because our prediction was too optimistic, and now the world looks darker than before. But outside of entertainment, do horror movies offer us any benefits? In general, fiction reveals that we like to live vicariously through other people. I've talked before about the fact that movies and other forms of literature allow us to become more adept at understanding the inner worlds of other people by activating areas of our brain involved in empathy and social cognition. This is as true for horror as for other genres. So if you enjoy horror, perhaps part of the reason is that you learn to face your fears, to protect yourself against predators, or simply to endure an unpleasant emotion in a safe context. At their best, horror movies may help to train us to be calm in the face of fear and stress. At the very least, they might make us grateful that we don't have to worry about Freddy Krueger, Hannibal Lecter, Jigsaw, or Annabelle. They remind us that many of the scariest monsters are nothing to be afraid of after all. But let me know what you think. Why do you like or dislike horror movies? Drop your answer in the comments below. All right, that's it. Thanks so much for watching this episode. Please like and subscribe to this channel and also head over to senseofmindshow.com slash newsletter to sign up for our e-newsletter. Finally, be sure to check out The Social Brain, which is my podcast with Taylor Guthrie, who's a social neuroscientist and creator of the channel, The Cellular Republic. As always, this channel is brought to you by the Diamond Mind Foundation. This episode was written and produced by me, Andrew Cooper Sansom. Thanks again. I'll catch you next time.